Well, good morning. We're so glad that you joined us today. We are thrilled that you're here. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, we are premiering today and just excited to spend time worshiping together, praying together, and just spending time in God's presence. You know, His Word is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And I believe today that you're going to be filled with faith as we step into a time of just worshiping Him. And I want to just pray for everybody who's watching right now. And uh, if you're here, just go ahead and um, maybe make a comment or say hello. Uh, it helps us know that you're engaging. And I believe that the more we engage as individuals to what uh, God is speaking, the more we actually get out of it. So go ahead, say hello, and we'll be uh, right here with you. And I'm looking forward to this. But God, we just thank you for today. We praise you. And we are so grateful for another day of life. God, we thank you that we're able to be in your presence here. God, no matter if we're um, in separate uh, areas, your, your spirit is the same everywhere. And so, God, we know that we're gathering together, not in the same room, but God, with the same heart and in the same spirit. God, we pray your Holy Spirit would be all over this time and just help lead us, guide us, be with us in this season that we're in as a church and as a nation and as a world and as a city. God, we just declare your goodness today. We ask, God, that you'd help us in the middle of wherever we're at, God, to look to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Well, today we're doing something a little bit different, and we are going to go over to uh, Joanne and she's gonna lead us in some worship songs straight from her home into your home. And so as she leads, I just really encourage you to join in and participate, lift your hands, lift your voice, sing along uh, with the songs that we're worshiping to today. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll spend a little time praying and in the word. And I believe today's gonna be a powerful time. So we look forward to uh, just a great time in worship right now. So here we go. Uh, Joanne, we're looking forward to some worship together. Good morning, Alive Church. Happy Sunday. Let's get ready to worship. Amen. This song right here is to give hope to anyone who is struggling to find hope. Lift your hands. Worship the Lord. Even if you feel like you can't, Give him all the glory and praise, because he's good no matter what. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. And I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder
wherever you're at, sing louder. If your circumstance is crushing you, praise even harder. Sing a little louder. 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 Oh, sing a little louder. Hey. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. God. We thank you, God. No matter what you're going through, God surrounds you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how we fight our battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how we fight our battles. 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 On our knees. That's how we fight our battle. On our knees. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. 
This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how. This is how. This is how we fight our battles. Cause you surround us. You go before us, Lord. And no weapon formed against you can prosper. No weapon. And the weapons of our warfare are spiritual in nature. Keep fighting. For God fights for you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because he surrounds you. Always. God, we thank you for the ability to continue to worship you together. Even though we're in different places, we just give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. God, I thank you for even the messages in those songs, God, that you're with us in the middle of the storm, that you're with us, God, you're surrounding us. Even when it feels like we're surrounded by so many other things, you're with us, you're guiding us, you're in the middle of it with us, and we're just so thankful for you, Jesus, so thankful we can lift up your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. Well, this morning, if you're with anybody um, or if you're watching alone, give yourself a high five, but give somebody a high five, a hug, a handshake, or what I like to say is if it's appropriate, a holy kiss, uh, and we'll um, greet one another this morning. But thankful that you're here today. And now we'll transition into just a time to receive our tithes and offerings. If you give online, it's really simple. You can go to our website and click on the give uh, link there. But just wanted to encourage you in your giving. I know this is a time where we're all pressed and stretched financially, but we as believers should never stop our, our generosity and our sowing into what God is doing on the earth. And so we, we give to God. We give to see his kingdom come, his will be done, and his kingdom established. And so just wanted to remind you that the word talks about as you water, you will be watered even more. And Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says, The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. And you might say in this season, well, how can I water if I don't have water yet? But notice it says, he who waters will then be watered himself. Sometimes it takes a step of faith to sow, to water, to, to pour out, believing that God's going to pour back into you. And he always comes through on his word. And even in this time where you might have lost a job, or you might be um, on furlough, or you might be uh, in a situation where you got your pay cut, I believe that uh, as we keep God first, come on, he will pour into our lives. He'll take care of us and watch over us. And he's the source. So if you don't know where you're going to get the water to water with, he is the source of everything. And so we look to him today. And I just want to pray for everybody as we give today. You can give at AliveChurchNYC.com. Or if you still have the app that we have through PushPay, you can give through that. Um, and then also uh, you could also mail in um, your offerings too. And if you need that address, uh, you can reach out to us. But God, we thank you for each person today. We thank you, God, that you are king over their life, that you're providing, that you're making a way where there seems to be no way. God, we just give you our everything. We give you our all, and we thank you. And as we sow today, God, you're going to sow back in to our lives. God, as we water, as we sow, God, we will reap, God. And as we water, we will be watered ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, we're going to get into the Word now today. I encourage you, if you have a Bible, you can grab that, get that with you. If you have uh, a pen or pencil, grab that, maybe take some notes. Or if you're on your phone, you can take notes on there. Uh, but we wanted to jump into the Word here and uh, just wanted to share, because I know the winds of life are intensified right now. Uh, and you can't really find solace or peace in the things that you've always found it in. Come on, a lot of things have been taken away from our life in this time. And sometimes it's hard to navigate when you don't have those things that you're used to looking to. But come on, even though things in this world 
we're not able to rely on. We can rely on God. Amen. And the Lord knows what he's doing. Come on, even in the middle of the flood, if you feel like the flood of fear or a flood of frustration is rising in your life, God wants to come through and break through for you. And I want us to remember that even when things seem out of control, out of our control, everything's still under God's control. He is sovereign and we look to him and him alone in this season. So if you have a Bible, grab it. If not, that's okay. No condemnation. If you would like a Bible and you don't have one, please reach out to us. Either message us or you can reach us um, through email at a live church. Nope, that's our website, but at connect at a live church nyc.com. Again, you can email at connect at a live church nyc.com or you can go to our website alivechurchnyc.com and just send us a message um, either on the home page or in the contact page that we have uh, there. But if you could turn right now to Nahum 1.3, I know it's a book of the Bible, maybe you um, haven't really maybe even known of before. Uh, I know I rarely read this book of the Bible, but I have found um, just a, a simple scripture in here that really has encouraged me. Uh, we're, so we'll look at Nahum chapter 1 verse 3 and then Psalm 29, 9 through 11. So turn with me or just listen and we'll have it there on the screen. But Nahum 1 3 says this, it says, the Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm, and clouds are the dust of his feet. And then Psalm 29, 9 through 11 says, The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. Amen. Who needs peace? Who needs more peace today? I'm sure you would be open to God blessing you with more peace today. So God, we thank you for this time. We just give you the glory and the honor. Just let your word speak to many today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Grab your coffee. Grab a pencil if you want to take notes, a pencil or pen, or type it on your phone. And uh, we'll get into the word here uh, today. So, you know, one time my family and I, we were on our way to visit my sister at the time, which uh, we lived across country at that, at that moment in time. And so my family and I were on our way uh, during Christmas to go visit my sister. And she was also pregnant with uh, her first child, which was a son and um I was over 15, almost 16 years ago, and uh, so it was 2004. We were on our way to uh, New York, actually, because she lived in the in New York State before I did or any of my family did. So we were flying out from Portland all the way to New York, and we had a rest um, a rest stop. That's when you're driving on the road. We had a layover in Cincinnati, and we were in Cincinnati. Uh, we got the news that there was a storm so bad that all flights were canceled. No one was going anywhere. And literally, this is December 22nd and three days before Christmas. And we were a little worried, you know, because sometimes you're like, okay, how long is this going to be shut down? And will we get back on a plane? Will we have to pay more? What's going to happen? But anyways, we, we sat around for a while and found out that we could not get a flight for two more days. And they weren't even exactly sure about that. And so we were thinking, man, we're gonna spend Christmas right here in the Cincinnati airport, which is a nice airport, but who wants to spend Christmas in an airport? Not me, not you, not many people. So uh, we, we spent one night actually in the airport, just found a spot that we could put our bags and we kind of took turns, one person staying awake while uh, everyone else slept. And then 
the airline was nice enough to give us one night in a nearby airport hotel, which was a lot better sleep than the airport. Um, but in this whole crazy scenario, nobody could control the results. Nobody could control the outcome of when and where they would make it to their destination. And I remember feeling like, man, what if we end up spending Christmas here? Well, I guess that's what we'll do. And it, it was interesting because even in the middle of that crazy storm, um, you know, there's still things that I remember from that time that make me laugh or that make me think, man, those, that was a great memory. And so even in the middle of a storm, there were some good things that happened and, and some like things we still laugh about as a family because of that time that we had stuck in the airport. And so there's, there's good that can come out of unknown seasons. There's good that can come out of uh, these times when we don't know what's going to happen next. When we don't have control, God is completely in control. And I want us to be reminded today of what it looks like when we're in the middle of it. And that's actually the title of today's message is in the middle of it. And then dot, 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 remember. So in the middle of it, remember, remember some things. And we're going to look at those things right now as we um, continue, because obviously the situation we're in right now with COVID-19 and obviously the medical crisis, the national economy crisis, the finances of every family, and maybe your business. Maybe if you're watching today and you have a business or you have a ministry or you have um, a job that you've lost, then God is still in control. And even in these times when it's out of control, um, we look to Him. And the Bible talks about storms. It talks about the rough times in life being like a storm. And so we find in the book of Nahum this amazing anchor verse that God's ways are in the whirlwind and in the storm. That God's ways are in the whirlwind and in the storm. How reassuring is that? That even in the middle of a storm, God has his way. Even in the middle of a whirlwind of how's this all going to come back together and when are we going to be able to get out and do life and, 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 and do the things we're used to. While there might be some things that God is maybe moving out of your life and you don't need to go back to, but there's also things that uh, he wants to do and cause you to remember in this time that he's in control. And in these kind of situations... The Bible talks about it as a storm. And so I wanted to talk about when we're in the middle of it, in the middle of the storm, kind of like the song spoke about today, I think we should remember this. And first thing to remember is that God is in control and he will have his way. God is in control and he will have his way. Isaiah 14, 24 through 27 says this. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned, so it will be. And as I have purposed, so it will happen. I will crush the Assyrian in my land. On my mountains, I will trample him down. This was a great enemy of, of the Israelites. And the Lord was speaking, I, I'm fighting for you. My way is in this fight and in this storm. His yoke will be taken from my people and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the plan determined for the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hands, right? He's got a plan for the whole world right now. This is the hand stretched out over all nations for the Lord Almighty has purposed and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out. And who can turn it back? Come on, even though things look a little crazy right now, even though they're out of control in, in our minds, he has a plan. His hand is stretched out over this. He knows what he's doing. He's God. He knows how to get through these kind of seasons way better than you and I do. And he is in control. So remember, God is in control and he will have his way. The second thing is to remember how much you need him. Remember how much you need him. 
And that might sound simple, but I think we need to be reminded more and more how much we need God and that we can't do it all on our own. We can't be strong enough. We can't be uh, all-knowing. We can't be all-powerful. That's God. That's only Him. And so John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from him, we can do what? Nothing. So we need to remember how much we need God in this season. Maybe we've been a little bit off in our own dream world in, in a sense, or off in our own ideals in a sense, and we need to come back to a place of remembering, man, we need God. Here's a couple quotes. We need God as much in the calm as in the storm. Another one says, the servant is nothing, but God is everything. And the last one says, may I never forget that on my best day, I still need God as desperately as I did on my worst day. Such great reminders in those quotes. I'm thankful that we can look to God no matter what season we're in. No matter if it's a great day, a bad day, a hard season. When things look out of control, He is everything. We are nothing. Third thing I think we should remember as believers, is to rest in how much we can rely on Him. Sometimes we get so anxious and flustered that we forget to rest in how much we can just rely on Him. His ways are in the whirlwind. His ways are in the storm. He knows what He's doing. Psalm 62, 5 through 8 says, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Such a strengthening, encouraging scripture, Psalm 62, 5 through 8. I love that. It just says it all. He's our rock. He's our salvation. He's our fortress. We find hope in him, peace, rest. He's everything we need. The fourth thing that we need to remember is to draw close to anchor people in our life. And what what do I mean by that? Obviously, Jesus is our ultimate anchor. But sometimes I think we go through these seasons for God to maybe rearrange and even cut off some of the connections we have with people that we, that we just don't need to be around anymore. And I'm not saying we don't love people or we cut everyone out of our life. I'm saying there's certain times and seasons where God changes up some things and, and sometimes does need to cut some relationships off because they're not glorifying to Him or they're not encouraging you. They're not encouraging the other person. And so it's better just to move on and part way. So what I mean by drawing close to anchor people in your life is who's there for you in the storm? Who's there for you in the good times and in the bad? Who's there for you in an anchor to keep you on the path that you believe that you're walking uh, on and, and pursuing God, who's with you encouraging you in that? Stay connected to those people because they'll help encourage you and you can encourage them. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times. Notice it says a friend, not, not who you call a friend, but an actual friend will love at all times. And a brother is born for a time of adversity. But if you don't really have anchor people in your life right now, that's okay. Start with the Lord. Don't go running out and saying, hey, will you be my anchor friend? No, allow the Lord to lead you to it. Allow the Lord to connect you to the right people in this season. Really think about that one. Who are my anchor people, my support system in my life? And if you don't have any that you can think of, start with the Lord. He can support your life. And he can support everything you're going through. He wants to be the initial anchor in your life before anyone else. The fifth thing I think we need to remember is to ask God to help us see the sin 
that we would otherwise never face. Sometimes in the calm, when we're locked in, even though it's crazy outside and that there's, there's a lot of things going on, we're, we're, we're locked down right now. You might be in isolation yourself. You might not have a family around you right now. You might be just by yourself. And maybe it's driving you a little bit crazy at times or stir crazy. But let me tell you, don't just busy yourself the whole time that you're in this moment. Stop and ask the Lord, God, what's going on in my heart? Show me some things. Psalms 139, 23 through 24 says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I encourage you, take a moment to read that almost every day. You might need to read it every day. I encourage you to take that Psalm, Psalm 139, 23 through 24, and add it into your devotional time and really ask God, God, know my heart. Try me. Know my anxieties. How many of us deal with anxieties. All of us do. How many of us deal with sins that we don't even know about? All of us do. Come on, there's things that God wants to reveal to you in this time that if you take a moment to stop and ask God, he will reveal it to you. Number six is remember to be open to changes you'd otherwise never consider. And what I mean is being open to God's ways. His ways are in the whirlwind and in the storm. Isaiah 43, 19 says this, See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You might feel like this is a wilderness season. You might feel like this is a wasted time, wasted season. It's not. He's doing a new thing and he's making a way even in these times. So rely on him. Know that. Remember and be open to the changes and the new things God is doing in this time. We have to embrace it. Can't run from it. Don't busy yourself in the normal things that you would busy yourself with, but take time to stop and say, God, what are the new things you want to do in my life? What are the new things you want to do in me so that I am changed through this process and not just the same after this is all passed over? And then number seven, remember to be still and take time to raise a hallelujah in the storm. Amen? Come on, we want to busy ourselves. I even heard it on the news the other day that experts are saying, stay busy in your house. Don't, don't allow for uh, just, just idle time. Don't allow for these things. I, I get what they're saying. I get their heart. They're saying, don't just uh, sit around and, and, and think about how hard things are. And don't think about just the depressive state you could be in right now. But I got to say, the Bible talks about being still and knowing that God is God. So it's important to take time to be still and not to always be busy. I've heard it said many times before, if the devil can't get you bad, he'll get you busy. And even in this time where we're locked down, we can tend to just go into busy mode and just rush, 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 even inside of our homes, rather than taking some time to be still and know that he's God. Psalm 46, 10 says, He says, Be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And I just want to end really where we started today. That the winds of life definitely are intensified right now. And you can't find the things that you've always navigated by And the flood of frustration and fear might be rising. But remember, everything is under control. Not your control, but under God's control. If you stop trying to find the way just all by yourself and you let God navigate, you're in for a pretty amazing surprise, I believe, in this season. When the storm passes, the storm that blew us around and kind of shook us up, a little bit violently for some of us, will actually be a storm that redirects us to remember that our amazing, loving God will have his way in our life no matter what. You can just close your eyes where you're at. 
wherever you're watching today, wherever you are today, I want to pray for a couple things. And that is that we would be reminded that God's in control in the middle of this storm. That we can look to Him, that He's our anchor in the middle of it all. And I also want to pray for anyone who wants to receive Christ into their life for the very first time. Or maybe you've walked away from the Lord. Maybe you're in a season of what we call just turned away from him and you need to redirect and return to him. I want to pray for that today. I'll I'll pray first for us to all be reminded how much we need God and that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than ours. So Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you that you would speak to every heart. Thank you that you've spoken to us, that you've reminded us of how much you love us, how much you've done for us, God, that you are in control in this storm, that we can look to you even in the middle of a crisis and know that you are in control. Even if we're not in control, we're thankful that you are. And so we look to you with all we are today. I pray we would find time to be still and know that you are God like never before. We would find time to get into your word, to pray, to be encouraged by one another in Jesus' name. And then if you're watching today and you would say, you know, I want to I wanna find my anchor. I want to find that anchor in Jesus Christ. I may not have all the answers you're saying to yourself or you're saying, I, I don't even know what the whole journey is going to look like, but you say, you know what, something is rising up in me. My faith is rising up in me to say yes to the ways of Jesus. That's you today. Maybe it's for the very first time that you would say, you know what, I want to give my life to Christ and allow him to be in control and to let go of what I think I'm in control because really we're in control of nothing. He directs everything. If that's you today for the first time or maybe you're redirecting and coming back to him again, then I just encourage you right where you're at to put your hand on your heart And just lift your hand to him just as identifying to say, God, I I want you to be the anchor. The Bible says that if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, that we will be saved. And so today is a day of salvation for you. So wherever you're at, pray this prayer. Because the Bible says believe in our hearts. So if you're believing in your heart right now and you know that you're believing it by faith, and I want you to say this, so believe in our heart, confess with our mouth. So here we go. Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. And I now know I need forgiveness. So I repent of all my sin. And I turn to you. Jesus, I believe that you came, that you died, and you rose again. To save me, to forgive me to allow me to have the free gift of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you for being an anchor to me. I thank you for this moment of salvation. And I turn to you, Jesus. I give you my life. The rest of my life is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer today, I encourage you, uh, if bold enough to let us know in the comments, uh, just say, hey, I I gave my life to Christ or I rededicated my life today. Uh, Thank you, Jesus, however you want to put it. Or if you'd like to do it more discreetly and uh, email us, uh, you can email us at connect at alivechurchnyc.com. Or again, you can go to our our website, alivechurchnyc.com and just send us a message through our website. But we're so grateful that you prayed that prayer. We're so grateful that you're getting your life anchored in Jesus in the middle of all that's going on. He loves you. He has a plan for you. And those of you who already know the Lord, man, God loves you. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for this season. And don't forget to know that he's in control. Remember that. Remember that while we're in the middle of it, that he's in control. He knows your heart. He knows your anxieties. 
He knows what you're going through and he wants to be there in the middle of this storm. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. We're so grateful that you uh, joined in today and we're looking forward to connect more as we go on uh, through this time together. So God bless. Have a great rest of your Sunday.